So, my name is Chantal Rich. I'm currently a learning leader at Oteha Valley School. When I first started teaching, obviously you do quite lengthy lesson plans and you spend your entire weekend writing them and they're set in stone almost and then bending away from those and flexing is hard because you spent so much time making this document. But as you go, you realise that you have to meet the needs of your kids. You have to be flexible. You have to change what it is that you're doing in reaction to what the kids need. With STEAM, the, you do a project or you start the project and by listening to the kids, not by teaching them, by listening to the kids, you realise what the next step is. And it's a very fluid process, but listening to the kids and understanding what that equates to in the curriculum is key. I think the best place is to actually acknowledge what you're already doing. I think in some way, shape or form, most teachers are already doing it, though they might not label it as STEAM. I think most teachers will recognise that perhaps they're bringing in elements of art into math lessons, like for example, making pictures when they're doing fractions or making mosaics when they're doing shape. So it is something that most people are already doing a comfortable starting point. Um, Pinterest, Google, looking through what other people are doing and getting those visual ideas and then using those visuals, using lesson plans that you find to do standalone lessons in your own class. For me the A in STEAM doesn't have to be just art, it could be looking at language arts, and you can look at writing a report or writing as a scientist after doing a science activity or reading the instructions. There are many ways of bringing in the art. It doesn't have to be a polished, finished piece of art that goes on the wall. It could be a sculpture. It could be a bed that they've designed for Goldilocks and the Three Bears. For the kids, that is a piece of art. And it is a piece of art, you know, we, we all think about furniture and furniture design it's something that's all over the television with the TV shows that are on just now that art does not have to be just that picture on the wall. So I think um, there's a quote an engineer who worked on bicycles and he said that art without engineering is dreaming and engineering without art is calculating. All these people bring far more to what they're doing than just one skill. It is that creative, creative thought, creative thought patterns and finding the interconnections between things. That when a child, for example, if a child does feel nervous about maths but is confident in coding, then bringing in those two parts, using that strength to deal with the thing that they feel nervous about brings strength to that child and allows them to see things in different ways and encourages them to use what they can do to scaffold those things that they're scared of. And the same for teachers too. And I think the best thing is to have a look on the line, find something that you see on Pinterest, on Google, on the, on the forums, there's plenty of forums. The, the New Zealand um, te primary school teachers one on Facebook. All of those places will have lessons, have images. When you find one that resonates with you, that you go, oh, that looks interesting, or I can see myself doing that, start there. Start with what you feel comfortable with, what feels familiar, what's not a thousand miles away from what you already do. And you will quickly, by the reaction of the kids, fall in love with doing it and it will become far more natural, something that you will pick up automatically. You hear from other teachers who at first were really, really nervous doing it, who are now going, oh, my kids said this in the morning and in the afternoon, I did that. That the thinking time needed becomes much, much less. The amount of planning that you need for it becomes less as you become more confident and more au fait with how quickly it fits in with the curriculum, that it fits in with maths, it fits in with literacy so quickly that you will very easily adapt to doing things in that slightly different way. A couple of challenges were to do with resourcing. 
So just knowing where to start, what to get, how to use it, where to store it. Um, at the time when I started it, I was new to a school as well, so I didn't quite know where everything was located in the school. So it was just a case of talking to the other teachers on staff and seeing who's got what hidden in the back of a cupboard somewhere. And then going through what you might need for that lesson or for those ideas, seeing what you can bring from home, what you can recycle, um, and just looking at the everyday products that you have around a class or things that are readily available and come quickly. I tend to go quite low tech, so I'm thinking about lollipop sticks, like popsicle sticks, glue, sellotape, um, pipe cleaners, those types of things, always very, very handy to have. They can be used in a variety of different ways. So yeah, those types of things. And moving then into slightly more digital things, looking at things with batteries that can be recharged in them. Because trying to find batteries and the thing dying halfway through the lesson is never much fun. So yeah, just making sure that those things are ready to go and that they'll work through the lesson, that you're not going to worry about the product or the item or the robot or whatever it is that you're using stopping working halfway through the lesson and you have to have a ream of paper ready to do something else halfway through because it didn't work. I think as it was part of a project that my school and a couple of other schools were involved in, my colleagues were aware of that so they were happy to help, they were happy to find the things that had been lurking in the back of the cupboard for a while and dust it off and bring it on out. So most people were very happy to help. At the time I was also new to New Zealand so I didn't know where to buy things from. So now everyone was really very helpful and pointing me in the direction of different shops and different catalogues and different people that they know so and so's husband is an engineer and he'll have lots of scraps of this and so on. And that type of thing was really very handy, just completely new to it, completely new to the area, new to teaching in New Zealand at the time and everyone couldn't have been more helpful with just sharing the ideas, their experiences of what works well, where you can find it. So the school I was working at had a senior school and a junior school and we were quite geographically away from one another and so we would work with buddy classes. That worked really nicely with the senior kids helping the junior kids with their fine motor skills and cutting um, and also we worked with other schools in a group so that was quite an eye-opener being able to go into other schools and see how they're incorporating STEAM into their lessons, for example. Some of the teachers I was working with was using it as a springboard into their writing for the week. So they were doing it on a Monday and then springboarding on. So it's just really nice sharing those ideas, visiting the schools, having Google Docs, etc., that we could open and share things that worked, things that didn't work, and just having that time to see what other people are doing and sharing ideas and growing ideas together. Um, at the school that I'm at currently we use Seesaw. So we take pictures or the kids take pictures of what they've done. They share it with their families, their families reflect on it, they reflect on it, their friends reflect on it. It's quite a beautiful thing to see the pride that the kids have in what they've done. We now on a Friday have Make a Difference Day and they will bring things in themselves, they're so excited to start, they start thinking about it during the week and start planning what it is they're going to make, build, create, share, looking at how they work together and then discuss going on what's happened and bringing it back the next week to do more to it. So I think this is one of the key points of STEAM is that it's looking at the key competences the children are learning to manage themselves. They work in groups, they get so excited about what they're doing. Their learning goes home. They start thinking about the learning before the class has begun. Their enthusiasm for it is just mind blowing that they, they are multifaceted, we all are. And it's tapping into that creativity, the excitement, the interest from them. It's not sit down, do a worksheet, it is bringing in that natural creative instinct that young people have and they appreciate being given the chance to flourish and shine and create. It's quite beautiful to see.